Thank you. <coughs> now, Heiner Winkler uh, told us and showed us a, a lot of very nice cases. And I'm going to try to show you how to get there. So my talk is about reduction techniques in diaphyseal fractures. The goals of my lecture realize that diaphyseal reduction needs traction. Understand that instruments, as well as implants, have reduction functions. They can require direct or indirect reduction, like we said before. And that reduction techniques can be learned and serve to avoid complications, meaning we're going to preserve the vascularity. As far as the definition of diaphyseal fractures, we have long bones with compact bone cylinders. It has a lot to do with the type of bone healing we will get. Simple fractures require anatomic reduction and compression to heal when using a plate. I'm talking only about simple fractures. Comminuted fractures will do best with bridging, splinting implants, length and alignment and rotation like we said before. But repetition is always good in some cases. The treatment goal is reduction and fixation without compromising this, the soft tissue. We can anticipate the fixation requirements by preoperative planning as we saw. We can use indirect and direct reduction techniques and I will show you how to do this. But what must we overcome? And we have fractures that displace. And very often, they will displace in a very characteristic pattern. We must overcome muscle vectors, and therefore, we should follow certain steps when reducing. Now, if you look at this fracture, look at the uh, position of the muscles here. The dislocation of this fracture is a sequel of the muscle pull of the uh, pectoralis ma ma major on this one area right here. And depending on where this fracture is, this fracture will dislocate in a different way. So the pectoralis ad adducts the proximal fragment. What if the fracture is <coughs> more distally and the pectoralis does not have that much of, a, of power over the proximal fragment? No, the deltoid abducts the proximal fragment in this way. So reduction involves distracting the main fragment and abdu abducting the arm. Now, Lorenz Berla was probably the father of conservative fracture treatment during the middle of the last century. He said, how should we reduce fractures? And he reduced fractures and he put them into uh, plaster and splints and was very successful even in metaphyseal and joint fractures. Relax the joints by placing the joints in neutral position. The Position the peripheral main fragment, the distal main fragment, into the direction the central fragment is showing. Distract the peripheral fragment, correct rotation and angulation, and use the soft tissue as a hinge. This is out of his book, 1933. And here you see his principle. You see, either you, you distract and you pull against the muscles, then you... Uh, and then you correct the translation and then you correct the length and the alignment here or you use the soft tissue as a hinge as you see here. And you go back into the original dislocation, then you distract, use the soft tissue which is here as a hinge. And this is out of the, our modern book and you see a distal radial fracture which you can do exactly the same with this, uh, exactly the same principle. You go into a sort of a dislocation that you had before, more or less during the time that the accident actually happened. And then you pull up and you use this area here as a hinge. And the soft tissue here will stabilize it for further either cast or uh, internal fixation. So what do we do with this arm? Now what we do, the reduction here involves distracting the main element, the main distal fragment and abducting the arm. Now this can be done manually and this can be done with a bunch of tools. The femur, the femur dislocation also follows the muscle pull 
and the more uh, proximal the frag fragment is, uh, the, the more differentiated, you will differentiated the situation you will get as far as dislocating is concerned. Here you have the pull of the abductors. Sorry, here you have the pull of the, of the adductors. Uh, they do not play that much of a role if, it, if you have a very distal type of fragment. But look at here. Here you have the pull of the psoas muscle and the uh, uh, abductors. So you have an external fixation, uh, ex external rotation, and also an abduction. Now this is a, 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 a situation where a CT scan actually can show you exactly what happens. Look at here. You see the uh, major trochanter, meaning this is externally rotated. You see uh, an angulation uh, towards lateral, meaning that the abductors are playing a large role in the dislocated bone. And you also have shortening. Why do you have shortening? Because you have the quadriceps and you have lots of uh, muscle here uh, and all you need is the muscle tone itself and this will shorten the bone. So this is what you have to keep in mind when you start reducing the fracture and we have help in doing this. Of course we have the traction tables, we have different types of traction tables and we also have the femoral distractor that I showed you this morning. Let's go into a little bit of detail on this. Now the femoral distractor is push used using shant screws. Again, you can use a shant screw with a sort of an aiming device, putting it into the trochanter uh, uh, area here. Uh, the shant screw goes perpendicular into the um, femoral condyle on this side. You can also do it in a different way. You can use the uh, you can use the shant screw in a different way. You can put it into the lesser trochanter uh, from posterior laterally. Uh, that's uh, a very hard bone here, and so this will hold very well. And you will avoid any uh, any incongruency or any uh, interference with your nailing procedure. Now, this is a very strong instrument. Like I said this morning, if you can actually overcome most of the muscle pull. Even in a in a big football player, you can overcome the muscle pull that you might encounter. This is a patient that we uh, we nailed on the uh, on a lateral decubitus position. Uh, <coughs> so the 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 leg is resting here. This is a um, a different type of a, a, a femoral distractor. The uh, shant screws are are in place. Now, what do we do now? We also have the, what we call the F instrument. This can be used for intraoperative leverage, if you like. This is made out of a carbon material and is tran uh, radio translucent and sometimes help to alleviate some translation. So this is one area. What you want to do in this case now, if I'm going to use the femoral distractor instead of a, um, a, distra uh, a, a traction table, I have to mark the area where I'm going to put my shant screw so that it doesn't interfere with the nail. I do this and this and uh, the shant screw should uh, be parallel to the knee joint. Here we have the shant screw going into the uh, uh, posterior lateral area into the lesser troche. It also does not interfere uh, with the aiming device of the uh, universal nail. Here you see the distal area where I've been using the, um, the femoral distractor uh, in this area and I can uh, certainly uh, and I, then it is easy for me to put down the nail. Um, here you can see where the, uh, the shant screw was put in. There's a little bit of callus right there. So once we put down our nail, or once we use our femoral distractor, there's another thing we have to worry about is verifying our reduction. How can we verify reducing a femoral fracture? There are several ways of doing this, and one thing you have to... Uh, <coughs> one thing which is very important is to find landmarks, find bony landmarks, either landmarks that you can palpate or landmarks that you can see using your C-arm. Now this would be a landmark here. Look at the, uh, the position of the, um, of the femoral condyles in relationship to the tibial plateau and also to in relationship uh, to the head of the fibula. Now compare that with the other side and you see exactly now that this leg is probably externally rotated in relation to this leg. Also, look at this uh, area here and compare it to the other side here. So uh, we're using the intact parts of the bone and intact parts of the, uh, the body to compare uh, and uh, that will help us a lot in verifying our reduction. What about 
verifying rotation. And once you get your nail in, even if you don't have the nail in yet, again, use, uh, use the uh, use landmarks that you can see on the, uh, uh, with the C-arm. Here you see the, um, uh, uh, the lesser troke on the left side. There is not, you cannot see the lesser troke on this side. What would this mean? This would mean that this leg is externally rotated. Now, if I, have th if I use the same principle uh, in the knee, and I know that both of my knees are parallel, and I can compare them both, and here I, have, uh, uh, I cannot see my lesser troke, then I must have an external rotation. Um, uh, uh, I, I have to correct my external rotation. Also, you can use your electric cotter cable for alignment. Uh, this is the way you do it interoperatively, and you can uh, compare also the ranges of motion. So when you're doing a nailing in supine position, and this also goes uh, for the lower leg, then uh, you should drape and uh, prep free both legs, because then you can also uh, compare the range of motion on one side uh, to the other. And sometimes it's surprising uh, what kind of rotational errors you will get that you can also correct during, the opera during your surgery. Another way of correcting rotation, and that is probably the most important uh, uh, corrective thing that you need to do on the long bones, is to match the cortical diameters uh, of the uh, proximal main fragment and the distal main fragment. And if you have a discrepancy here of the diameters, then you have to uh, take for granted that you probably have a rotational error. Using the skin lines for approximating rotation is okay, but it usually doesn't work in, in most of the cases. So this is very, this is, uh, very sensitive. And uh, uh, you should use your fluoro in order to turn the leg and to see, do I have a, a, a real discrepancy uh, between the cortical diameters here, or is it a matter of projection? The tibia can be, <coughs> can be reduced very nicely also using the femoral distractor. And here you see a picture out of the A book, OA, uh, AO book, where you see that the shan screw is put in here perpendicular to the, or parallel to the, um, uh, to the joint. Also here, distally, these shan screws must be put parallel to the joint because they will give you your angulation. And as long as they stay parallel and don't move inside the bone, then you have perfect angulation. Here we have <coughs> used a uh, uh, preliminary K wire and then we have the parallel uh, shant screw here. Then we can put down our uh, nail. Uh, uh, and reckoning actually with the stability that the femoral distractor is giving us. Here, distally, we can pull back the shant screw the moment the nail comes down distally here. <coughs> Locking is not, not such a big problem. You can see it right here. This fracture healed very well. You can also use the nail as a reduction device itself. Now this is, uh, you can call it direct reduction, you can call it indirect reduction, but we usually use the uh, unreamed nails uh, as reduction implants. We can also reduce using plates and also on the diaphysis. And here you see a Montasia fracture uh, you see a, a fairly comminuted fracture of the ulna. Now, you can get a lot of problems with this if you, do not, uh, uh, if you don't watch for the vascularity of the bone. But there are ways of doing this, and this is very amenable to indirect reduction. This is also a picture out of Jeff Mass' book, and here you use the push-pull technique again. So you have a screw outside of the plate area. You anchor, uh, you, you anchor the... Sorry... You anchor the plate distally, you use pointed reduction forceps uh, to do some type of, um, uh, of, of uh, a general reduction. You use the laminar splitter to distract, you use the bone holder, the plate holder forceps to note, uh, in order to hold the plate to the bone proximally, and then you can manipulate the, uh, this area here. here. And then once you have done that, you can uh, put compression on this, you put axial compression, and you rely on sort of a interdigitation for more stability. This is the case which was done exactly this way. You see 
there might be a sort of a, de a defect here. Here you see uh, the drill holes that were used uh, for the push-pull situation where the push screw was on the uh, distal side. And uh, this, uh, and this is the, uh, the case, no bone grafting was done here. This is considered more or less an anatomic reduction of the fracture, but by bridging the fracture itself. We saw this this morning, I don't have to uh, 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 reiterate on this, screw function using the screw and the plate as a reduction element. I want to show you one <coughs> very tricky way of doing something. If you see, this is the non-union of the uh, distal tibia with a fresh fracture. This is the B-type fracture. What can we do now? And there are ways of reducing this and putting this under compression uh, that will give you uh, a, a good idea of what you can do using implants and using the distractor, using a laminar spreader, all of these tools. <coughs> So here you see a long implant, which is only anchored, uh, fixed uh, distally. Now you have a push-pull screw here. You also have, using the laminar spreader, you also have the distractor, which will help you um, uh, position your, uh, and, and align the axial alignment. You may, for the B type of fracture, use a, uh, a, a compression device. Here you have fixed um, using, you have fixed the plate to the bone. This is the, uh, the lateral for this. And uh, this is more or less bridging. Uh, and this is uh, about one year out where uh, not only the, the, the fresh fracture is healed, but also uh, the, uh, uh, the non-union. A couple of words to the subtrochanteric area. You can use the plate as a reduction uh, uh, reduction device, also in combination, for example, uh, with the uh, um, distractor. You can put the plate to the bone. Uh, uh, you can use the uh, articulating tension device for distraction so that you can uh, align the bone the way you would like to have it. Then you can turn the articulating tension device around and use it as a compression device. This is what's done in this case here, uh, where the um, blade plate was used. There is uh, actually, this is more or less an indirect reduction. All of the comminution here was left the way it was. After eight weeks, we see a lot of callus here. And after 24 months, we see that uh, this is healed very well. So using indirect reduction techniques with your plates, with, other, uh, with your uh, femoral distractor, uh, is, is certainly a way to go here. So traction table, distractor, instruments, and implants are all tools of reduction. You will usually have indirect and direct reduction even in the diaphyseal bone, depending on the type of fracture. And these reduction techniques are meant to preserve the vascularity and make your surgery easier. Thank you very much.